teapot. Right. The tea must be poured at all circumstances, no matter what. So I did what I had to do. Come on, y'all. Let's get into this. I know we have a lot of time these days, but let us get into this airline tea ASAP. I cannot deal with this movie of a life that I'm living. I love that here they have these tiny little mini stove tops like I understand this size makes sense to me that size is a bit excessive as far as large but look at this little mini one <laughs> okay yeah making my tea and time to film the situation that is currently going on let me do what I always do because I like the receipts um, I like to stick to the facts because so many people throw in their opinions and everything and things can get constrained but with this coronavirus Rona the cases in the USA right now, this is a live update, 1,238,052, or 419, excuse me, new cases as of right now in this moment. It's 7 o'clock in the morning, Eastern Time, um, and 13 new deaths today. This is insane like this is actually insane i don't know if anybody or i'll try to link it down below it's this um app that i use called uh world -O meters w-r-l-d-o-m-e-t-e-r-s dot info and it constantly updates a lot of things not just the virus but like the population how many um gallons of water is being used today how many people bought money on illicit drugs like i don't know how they do these counts but it's all in here and i find it interesting so yeah, New York, New Jersey, Massachusetts, Illinois, California, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Florida, Texas, Connecticut are up there in the top. Um, Louisiana and Texas has managed to stay at the top this whole time. So, update you guys, I decided to take the three month leave off of my job. Originally, I came to Barbados in March and it was for vacation vacation purposes I was able to drop a trip that I did not think I would be able to get rid of and then move another trip up and so I took a few weeks off I was like ooh let me treat myself you know go on vacation get to this beautiful island lockdown has happened which means I cannot leave even if I wanted to leave no flights are leaving out to go back to America right now flights are not coming in commercial commercially on a regular basis um, due to COVID-19 so not only am I on lockdown I'm also quarantined for a few weeks cool I showed no symptoms um, once again it's never too far from me tea hydrating myself vitamins liquids everything constantly doing things to boost my immune system because that is just how i've lived my life this isn't a new process due to coronavirus this is a lifestyle thing for me so drinking tea drinking water eating my vitamins exercising trying to eat right balancing things because i do still drink alcohol obviously that's not good for you everything in moderation i still want cheesecake still not good for you technically but you know the best things in life are bad for you so doing all of this on this island only for there to be a curfew um, initiated now when I originally came here I wanted to get my temporary license I was going to get my ears pierced again I was gonna change my hair up um, I was gonna you know just live my little island life now because of a curfew everybody has to be in at a certain time I believe it's 8 p.m. it might have relaxed a little bit um, today I forget the rules changed today but anyways got to be inside by 8 p.m. or you can choose between a $50,000 fine or a year in jail if you break curfew and I know people hear things like that and they think it's excessive they're like okay wow you're in Barbados and you're on lockdown and guess what let me look up the case numbers in Barbados compared to back in the United States and I'm just saying this, I'm not doing it as like a bragging thing. This is just to show when it's something like this is actually taken seriously. And it's not just this, oh, I want to be able to do what I want. I don't want my freedoms taken away from me versus people that are like, you know what? Let me listen just in case, because it's not just about me. This could affect someone else. Total cases in Barbados, 82, 82. Total deaths, seven. Now, obviously, this island is much smaller. Population, much smaller. Like, look how beautiful that is. Look at those tiny little numbers. 
obviously this is a much smaller place and if it was to get bad here it would wreak havoc like it is back home in Louisiana like it is back home in Texas like the difference is night and day when I read these articles and when I look at stuff from news or things pop up on my Twitter timeline about these protests and about people, you know, wanting to go get haircuts and wanting to just have everything open back up and then the death toll is going back up and there's no cure and you're around all these people in these riots and now they're bringing it back potentially to someone that they love someone that has a pre-existing condition their kids their families their life you're messing with their life because you want to be out um it's insane it's really insane i can't y'all it's just it's just so much like i know everyone has their own opinions and without getting into how i personally feel about it let me focus on my work situation so fast forward i come back to Barbados and it was a vacation for me now I'm here now I'm stuck here <laughs> and people keep saying oh my god I can't believe we're stuck in Barbados when are you coming back to the U.S. you're stuck you're stuck baby if I could be stuck anywhere I would want to be stuck right where I'm at I'm in a place where you can legally drink and drive look it up I'm in a place where people still hitchhike here and it's safe they're not used to the serial killer vibes that go on in the USA. I could open up the door at any given point, leave this door wide open all day if I wanted to, and nothing would happen to me. Nobody would come in here and hurt me. If anything, someone would come in here and say, hey, is everything all right? Just checking on you. Are you all right? You're good. Walking up and down the street 2 a.m., fine. And it's, it's insane to me, but it's also humbling and it, it gives me so much hope like it seems like such a small thing but I've seen so many bad things go on in the world I've had so many weird situations happen to me I was born in Oak Cliff like it's not the best part of Texas look it up lived in College Park you know things like that to where just knowing that there's still places in the world where things are safe and there are good people and they're genuinely good people it's not people just smiling in your face and laughing behind your back or taking a knife out like ah, I got her no like it's actually safe and it's nice to see that there are still situations like that now i'm not naive and i'm not stupid i still lock my door at night um for principle of the matter i am a girl i am alone out here but it is it's different to open up my laptop and get on twitter and see all these people protesting and shoving cops and just blatantly being disrespectful fighting on planes fights are breaking out on planes between passengers that are you know confused are upset about social distancing the mass hysteria and the way humans are acting in all of this is what is terrifying for me so I made the decision to leave my job for three months it's a paid leave um, my company did offer different options uh, I know there was like an early retirement option there was a paid leave option there was an extended option I don't know there were all these different options and I I'm not at work I'm, I'm not dealing with I don't like to like do work type things as far as being a flight attendant whenever I'm off because it does mess with my peace <laughs> Um, just saying all of the negativity people are now throwing around people getting furloughed that this has been bad um, for the aviation industry obviously because with less people flying you need less flight attendants so now there's a question of if they do furlough and they're saying this is worse than 9-11 as far as airlines recovering what does that mean for the future what does that mean for people that just started training that now have to stop what does that mean for new hires that just got out on the line and are a few weeks in and are being exposed to this virus or are being exposed to people and constantly around people on flights and maybe they get it. Flight attendants have died from this. And for me, it wasn't my decision to take a paid leave and my decision to stop flying for a moment. I've never not flown for this long. So this has already been like a, it's been a weird reset, but also good. Like my body, I feel so much better. All of like the stress in my shoulders, cause I do see a chiropractor as well as have a massage um, therapist. So all of the tension in my shoulders is gone, my neck, my back, my whole body feels better. I wake up constantly almost at 6 a.m. on the dot yesterday on Cinco de Mayo I woke up at 5 55 a.m. on the dot on Cinco de Mayo I was like oh my god I screenshotted and everything but I have not touched caffeine since March 13th and I wake up every single day just on my own so 
I've been hydrating, I've been doing all these things for my body on top of not being in a little pressurized tube at 36,000 feet with multiple people asking me for Diet Cokes and it has taken off so much just weight that I can carry fine but it just for it to not be there I'm like oh, I just feel young I feel alive <laughs> but as much as that's been great for my body I still miss flying like there's still a teeny little part of me that the sky will always have no matter what I actually do plan on getting um, a tattoo that is like Mem not what is the word Kamora Kamora y'all I cannot say that word okay remember you know what word I'm talking about where you like honor something that I want to get a tattoo and um it's an aviation tattoo but it's also tied into Harry Potter so I already have the idea of what I want to get it's actually several tattoos that I do want to get um, but yeah, with all of this going on, it's made me realize how much I do love aviation and how much our industry is being completely remolded right now. In my opinion, I do feel like 2021, aviation is going to look different than it did before. And it's very intriguing and also interesting to me to see a lot of people I would have on flights from certain um, parts of the country were already wearing face masks. This was common. So these are my face masks, by the way. Since I'm in Barbados, I had two crochet. That's like a thing people do out here. So I got my little, this one to match my outfit. Okay, my favorite color. It was supposed to be more yellow, but I actually do like, I ended up liking this on my skin tone better. So gold and pink. And I can do, you know, if we want to switch it up. <laughs> Just the fact that this is a thing. And then got this bad boy this is like my everyday go-to mask yeah yeah in 2020 masks like Fendi and Chanel and Dior and my favorite brand YSL I can't wait to see what kind of designer mask we they come up with the diamond bejeweled and crusted and this is the movie that we live in where now this is normal so it has been shocking um more so than anything, people's reactions to being stuck inside has been appalling to me. There are people that are like, you know what, is it weird to me that I've been perfectly fine staying inside? I have never watched so much Netflix in my entire life, y'all. And I have loved every second of it. And I don't know if that makes me a lazy person. I don't know if that just makes me a weirdo. But this quarantine has not bothered me at all. Like, as far as being here, the only thing that I miss, really and truly, is obviously being away from auntie because, like I have mentioned, she does have pre-existing conditions. And with her age and everything, it's like different checking on her now. So we text, we FaceTime, we call. I'm in contact with my parents all the time, with my friends, my family, constantly. My phone is always, which a matter of fact, I mean, yeah, it's on Do Not Disturb. Um, my phone is always going off from other things going on. And it's always been like that because... I always check on my people like that's the gang those are the homies they always hear from me I always hear from them especially because I move around so much with flying so now we just continue to do that and it's almost like in my head I'm just on an extended trip so even though all this virus stuff is going on even though it has been obviously a very difficult situation I'm just treating this as some layover that I'm having that has lasted for months <laughs> So even with seeing some people that I look up to like flight attendants, I really don't watch flight attendant vloggers much because I already know what the job consists of and I know on the in and outs, you know, what our day to day is and whenever I'm chatting to other flight attendants, we're chatting like we're cutting up and we're talking about offline stuff that we can't even vlog about. That type of situation, the tea party. So I, you know, just with seeing flight attendants that I love that are still flying, and risking it and doing it because maybe their financial situation they they have to fly the bills have to be paid um or they don't they feel okay they feel comfortable they feel good they're just doing the minimum most of them are ferrying flights flights are wide open like i'm talking less than 20 people half of them not even paid a lot of them are standbys buddy passes and now it's a different type of flight attendant that you have to be because you're dealing with a different type of passenger I'm not one to be shady all the time, but from time to time, <laughs> from time to time, a uh, little shade, just show a little, throw a little shade in there. Um, I have had people come to me from my previous airline that have quit due to the circumstances that they're experiencing, and then also due to things that are being said in the news, articles coming out, etc. I will say this. 
um, without getting too much into it on this video because I've already ran my mouth quite a bit. I see, I now see the difference between a job that's unionized versus unionized, and I didn't before. Um, I, I see both sides of the story. I can see how both have their pros and cons. However, please understand, I need you guys to listen to me when I say this. I was born in Dallas. I was born in Dallas. Oh my god. My mom, my dad, my grandma, my grandpa, my grandmama, my grandpapa, my aunts, my uncles my cousins my favorites all of them are there so this is so different from me the experience that i have now being based in dallas versus what i went through in dc versus what i went through in atlanta versus what i went through in minnesota it's so night and day i can't even tell y'all how different it is to drive from dfw and drive straight to my aunt and uncle's houses and they're barbecuing that is so different than leaving Atlanta and going back to my crash pad after the worst three day with nothing but Florida turns and Florida layovers and upset and crying myself to sleep. Like it's just so different. So I do feel like there's so much bias for me thrown in there that I know people ask, but I still feel like I have to constantly throw out the fact that it's, it's different now. Um, I do feel like my style of vlogging and how I am as a YouTuber has changed drastically from 2013, obviously, to 2020. I would hope that I would not still have the mindset and still be the same person that I was all those years ago. Um, so yeah, I just feel like you guys deserve just authentic raw genuine down-to-earth chats like this once again it's my opinion i live for the comment section so please 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 comment anything that you want if you would like me to continue the tea party if you feel like actually chill i can do i can do both um all of my social media will be linked down below make sure you subscribe but youtube just is like mm, sure subscribing yeah whatever also hit the bell notification so when i actually post you guys will see it so appreciate it so much I'm going to do a part two of this and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.